All right, guys. Um, so this is going to be a long video. Uh, this is the big video. This is one that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I wanted to wait until this project was completed, getting all the kits fully assembled so I can kind of break each one down. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each one of them, you know, go over the basic contents. Uh, I'm going to cite some information that I got off of the med department site as to some of the revisions and changes that happened to some of the kits. So the representation here is really um, how the kits looked mid-war, between 44 and 45. Uh, 1943, medical department starts putting out some changes to what the guys were carrying, so there are going to be some missing items that were on the original packing lists that were no longer included. Uh, the quantities of some things changed, so as I go through each kit, I'll kind of break that down, tell you what changed and, and when, roughly. Um, so this is going to be what I'm going to have set up at my main display this, this coming weekend. Um, really, the main goal behind this is to educate people as to how the aid man wasn't just necessarily, you know, the medic, how, you know, what equipment he carried, how it changed. Um, as you moved up through the ranks because you, you know, had different medical responsibilities depending on what rank you were from private to NCOs all the way up to medical officers. So your kit that you carry and your equipment is going to reflect those responsibilities. So it's a good visual to show um, what they carried, what the equipment was, and how it you know, reflected upon their, their job, their medical duties at the time. Um, so we'll start over here with the uh, privates loadout. Two bags. Um, I have one insert. Not everything is out. Some, you know, pencils and some of the small things like that aren't laid out for this right now. Um, but you'd have one insert for your uh, pill vials. Um, and that was, no, I'm sorry. You have a different insert, not the pill insert, but... Um, the other one for the ammonia spirits and stuff, the one with the pouches. So, really at the private level, um, you're basically a glorified band-aid man. You're really, you know, your main job focus is to control bleeding, treat for shock, um, stabilize the patient as quickly as possible, bandage them up, and get them moved as quickly as possible. So, you're loadout is going to really reflect that. You're not going to have a lot of the medicines or sulfadiazine or sulfonilamide or anything crazy. You're just going to have really a lot of bandages. Um, so here, how I have it laid out is for the pouches. So in your right pouch, this would all be in there. Left pouch, that would all be in there. Uh, triangle bandages, you have an eye dressing kit, iodine swabs, um, the adhesive compresses, they're band-aids, but it's another name for it. adhesive compress. That's the Band-Aid sticks. Uh, 16 of the gauze bandages that I talked about in the other video that I made up. A tourniquet, scissors, a uh, medical department tin. Now, originally these tins were for carrying the iodine swabs. Um, 43 to 44, they changed the contents from 12 to 6. And when they made that change, they also went over to starting to use the other packaging, the cardboard box. Um, because again, with the war effort, um, any type of metallic material was more suited for making ammunition and gun parts and stuff like that. Uh, so the medical department, you know, was just like, we have to use the basics, you know, cardboard or chipboard, you know, um, paper materials to do their packaging with. Um, so this is all the contents in the right hand side, left hand pouch. You have eight of the smaller Carlisle bandages and your uh, emergency tag book sitting there in the pouch. Um, and that's, that's really it. Um, you you end up having some different versions of the uh, tourniquet come out. The tourniquet that was in this kit at the time was a strap and um, buckle style. They would later come out with an elastic style uh, that would end up replacing that. And... Um, Late 40, well, not late 45, sorry about that. Early 45, they start coming out with different colored bandages. They actually go to like a field brown or an OD brown colored bandages. So you'll start seeing um, the band-aids or the adhesive compresses coming out 
in a different color along with those gauze bandages. Uh, but that is your basic private, you know, level loadout. Very bare bone, simple and basic. All right, moving down the line to the NCO's kit. Now the NCO's kit, this is where you start getting um, a lot of different things. So in the right hand side here, I believe that's laid out here, we have your pill vials for your um, cathartic and your um, basically, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got everything laid out here too. And if I forget, I'm looking at the paper. I kind of got a tongue twister. It's early in the morning. And I've been up late uh, working on this. Uh, but your pill vials, the compound cathartic is actually a, a type of um, like indigestion medicine. It's for, you know, if you're um, bloated or, you know, it's basically a laxative, really. It's to get things moving. Um, if you ate some bad food or, you know, I mean, you're, you're kind of bound up, um, you could use that. And uh, the, I, I always have a hard time pronouncing that, the acetylic acid, um, aspirin, basically. So that is what your pill vials are. And then on the right here, you have a thermometer, um, an oral thermometer. And again, you have your EMT book, two different size pins, you have um, what they say, a medium sized pin and a larger uh, pin. You have two cases of your morphine, you have the standard burn injury set, eye dressing set. Uh, in this kit, you can either have the metal container or you'd have the cardboard uh, or box style iodine swab packaging. One thing of band aids, tourniquet. You have a little bit more medicines. This is your uh, sulfadizine, your wound tablets. You can either have them in cardboard. Um, packaging with the uh, like pretty much kind of like tin foil insert with the pills in them uh or you could have them in the paper style um packaging on the left these are really primarily all your bandages um you have your regular absorbent gauze um your triangular bandages and your compressed sterilized gauze so really this is your bandage side um, but you got three sets of four for all the bandages, and then you got eight of the compressed sterilized bandages. Um, at one point, this kit did have the medical officers um, kit, but that was, you know, they changed that early 43, so this layout's not going to really reflect that. Um, you would have had a needle sterilizer in here as well for your hypodermics, because you had a hypodermic kit as well. Um, but when that was, re when the um, hypodermic syringe kit was canceled, the needle sterilizer along with the uh, officer's kit that would have been in here went out as well. Uh, there'll be some revisions to the burn injury set and the eye dressing set, a different version of them comes out um, in late 44. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, you originally would have had two boxes of uh, the morphine. It got up to three at one point. So having two laid out there is still perfectly fine. And last but not least, we have the medical officer's kit. The medical officer, because he has a little bit more gear with him and stuff like that, he is reduced down to one bag. The NCOs and the, officer, or the, NCOs and the privates will be carrying two bags with full loaded contents. The officers will be trimmed down to one bag and be carrying all this just in one bag slung across the shoulder. And also in the equipment breakdown, you know, every uh, set has the candle straps, which I have downstairs and uh, suspenders. But for space, can't lay all that stuff out with it, just at least to get the bags out. Um, again, it's gonna be really similar to the NCO's kit. Um, really, the big addition is the medical officer's kit. Um, you have your your vials for your medicine. The medicine doesn't really change across the board from the NCOs to the officers. You still have the, the compound uh, and, and the acid. Uh, you have two different size pins, just like you do in the NCO kit. You will have three uh, cases of the morphine and um, what else? You have sulfonilamide powder, along with your sulfadiazine pills. Um, so diazine is the tablets, sulfonilamide is the powder, 
Well, eventually this will go away in uh, beginning of 44, actually. The medical department kind of comes out and says, you know, it's, it's a waste because they actually found that in some instances the powder was actually compounding the problem in the wound and made wounds a little bit more difficult to clean out when the injured, you know, when the injured soldier would get to um, an aid station or further down the line in medical care to maybe a collecting station. When they would try to deep clean uh, large wounds, some of this stuff made it problematic. It was stuck in there, um, either couldn't get it out, or sometimes when it was applied, it was applied in a dirty environment and the dirt stuck to the powder and got in the wound and so forth and so forth. So they end up really kind of going away from the powder form of the sulfa drug and they stick to just the adjustable wound tablet. Now, one thing you are limited to though, with the wound tablets is it's good for everything except for um, any large intestinal or gut wounds um, or you know a wound that is profusely bleeding re really, really bad. Because um, what it was found to do was actually kind of make you bleed out more and easier. Um, so they did have their limitations in use. Uh, you have eight of your gauze bandages here, small ones, and that's pretty much the basic loadout for the officer. Um, you can see how, as we move down, you know, from so many bandages from here, because his primary job focus is to control the bleeding, get them bandaged, treat for shock, you know, get them moved as quick as possible. So then when we get to the officer, you know, when the officer is involved, um, he might be overlooking already an injured person that came from one of these guys, either an NCO or a private, and uh, his primary job is to maybe redress a wound. Uh, he can do, you know, immediate um, initial patient care, um, but he might be doing, you know, triage to where he's redressing um, previously um, treated soldiers and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much the basic um, overview of the different equipment loadouts. Um, again, this has been a, a big project for me because I've been working on it um, a lot over the course of the past two months, you know, finding the materials, finding the files, translating, you know, the PDF files that we have available to us to use um, to the packing list to make sure that they, they match as closely as possible uh, to what would have been in there, you know. So the stock numbers are pretty darn close. There's one or two things in here that might be off, but they um, they're they would have been used. They're like they're they're pretty darn close. So yeah, I wanted to share this with you guys uh, again. You know, kind of go through the the equipment, and this is really you know for display purposes again to to give the general public a really good idea as to what these guys carried. You know, full full loadout. Um, when I've done presentations in the past, you know, I kind of had a an array of different bandages out, you know, just to show an example of this is what they might have carried with them, but this gives you a lot better of a view of the total equipment layout. And also, again, like I stated earlier, how it kind of correlates to the, the care that the individual um, medic, you know, either at the private NCO or officer's level was providing. So, Everything on the table, again, is all reproduction that I handmade, painstakingly handmade. Uh, the bags and everything are all original. Um, this will also allow me to keep a lot of my original stuff off the tables at events. So, one, it's not getting picked up and handled a lot. Two, it's not, you know, when I go to some outside events, you know, it's stuff sitting in the sun. And these paper products, when they're especially original and old, they don't like being out and exposed like that. And also they might get wet. Um, you know, this stuff is, I wouldn't say disposable, but if it gets wet, you know, it's not gonna, you know, be something original getting damaged. It's something I can remake and, you know, replace pretty easily and cheaply. Um, all the PDF files are available online on the World War II uh, paper and projects page on Facebook. So if you're a World War II reenactor that does medical that wants to, you know, make your own stuff like this just to have to sit out at display events and stuff like that. Um, definitely get on there and check it out. Uh, the 
color of the cardstock. It's all cardstock I got from Michael's, you know, Arts and Crafts. You can you can find that really easily. The only thing that I think I might have off is the uh, Carlisle dressing boxes. They should be, I think, a little bit of a lighter of a color. But in general, everything else is um, pretty darn close um, to what the original packaging would have looked like, brand new, you know, being carried. Other than that, if you have any questions, comments, you know, suggestions on video content, um, I do plan on doing one more, you know, with full gear and stuff like that and, and what they would have been carrying along with all this stuff more geared towards people that are maybe just getting into reenacting or if you want to go over to the medical side of things what you should have is really nothing different than uh your your standard issued equipment but oh another thing is actually when i first started making these um a few years ago i actually packaged band-aids and actual gauze pads and everything like that in all the boxes so that i would actually have a quote unquote live medical kit with me at events that I could use, but it was in period, you know, packaging. So if you are somebody that's EMT trained like I am, or has, you know, a medical background and you want to carry your own crash, mini crash bag with you at events, and you don't want to, you know, have anybody see modern packaging, it's all, it's definitely an optional making these up and, uh, you know, putting, um, gauze pads and stuff like that and gauze roll in them and and keeping them warn you so you actually kind of have a period correct kit but it has modern packaging in them um especially like with the adhesive compresses for the band-aids you know i have like two or three of those that just have a stack of band-aids in them uh, some of these pill vials have actual um aspirin in them stuff like that advil um so if we are at events some of us that are medically trained uh, and have the experience where we're called upon in actual situations where if somebody gets hurt or if somebody's not feeling good, um, we can actually intervene and provide actual medical care at events before it can get too out of hand. So again, I was really excited to uh, share this, you know, with you guys, and um, I look forward to if you guys have any comments, uh, questions, or suggestions for future videos. So have a good night.